back. Welcome to Weekly Wisdom. So glad you're here. Uh, I hope I have something to share with you today that will be encouraging, um, that will help you to have a boost of strength to be able to endure, uh, to keep on going a little while longer till you can see what the end is going to be. And so I want to start probably, I don't know how many, but I'm going to talk to you all for a while over the next few weeks from the subject of covered, covered. I, I want you to understand, hey mom, I want you to understand that God has us covered, that God has his people covered. Um, and so yesterday I had uh, two conversations with people, one at the very beginning of my day and one at the end of my night uh, with two people uh, who began to share some experiences that they were having um, and, and there were some parallels in those experiences. Some of the parallels were that they have been under what appears to be attack. Uh, the enemy, people, uh, all sorts of things have begun to come against uh, the peace of these people who I'm connected to. Um, I think that that is not just the two people that I talk to. I think that there is a cycle, a pattern, um, a reoccurring trend, if you will, uh, that we are facing some very real, uh, very strong attacks against our peace, against our success, against our prosperity, against our health, against our families, against our um, occupations and our career against our future, against our future, against our place and our calling, uh, our purpose that we have in God. And so as many of us are facing different kinds of attacks, um, in both situations, the individuals requested that I would pray. Um, and what I found and when I really realized kind of the, the similarities and the common denominators in these two very different situations uh, that were brought to my attention yesterday, I began to recognize and to realize that my prayer uh, was really the same prayer for both of these very different situations. And I believe that it is also my prayer for you with whatever you may be facing, uh, those things that feel like you're under attack, those things that feel like uh, there are things coming against your peace, coming against your forward movement, coming against your joy. Uh, I, I believe that the words of my prayer and some of the words that I'm going to share with you today uh, will be a source of encouragement. And I believe that they are the truth uh, that God wants us to have in mind as we face these challenges, these hurdles, these uh, oppositions that begin to uh, war against us. And so um, I found myself praying an almost identical prayer. Uh, one of those pieces is, God, will you please be a hedge of protection around us? And I want to talk a little bit about what that means, a hedge of protection. Um, I found what was rising in me is that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And I don't know who needs to hear this uh, today or whenever you're watching this. Um, but I hope that you'll just start to just grab or prophetically grab hold uh, to some of this stuff that I'm throwing out there right now. It, it rose up in me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then the, the, the B clause of that scripture that we often leave out is and every tongue or every word, every voice uh, that, that rises against me in judgment, he shall condemn. He shall condemn. So no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment, he shall condemn. Um, and so another thing that rose up is uh, a, 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 a request that God, will you give us strength that so that we can hold on, even when we begin to feel like letting go. Um, and again, I don't know who exactly needs this today. Let me know if it's you. I want to know so that I can continue to uphold you in prayer in these, these kind of uh, principles that were thrown out but we need strength to be able to hold on when we feel like letting go 
Um, you don't really need strength to hold on when when you are encouraged like this is working out I'm going to just hold on to this until I get to the spot where he's taking me No, no, that's not really when you need that extra boost that extra lift of strength when you need it is when you're barely holding on And it feels like I'm about to lose my grip and if I lose my grip I'm going to fall in a very public way in a very um, a way that may be challenging to come back from um, and so I'm praying that you will have strength to hold on through the pressure, to endure through the attacks that are coming against you uh, so that you can make it to where you're going. Um, and another principle that, that rose up in both of those prayers is something that I think is true for us. I think many of us are standing right at the edge of breakthrough. Oh my goodness. Right at the edge of the promised land, right? Just 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 you're so close. You're so close. And I I'm here to encourage you today not to allow the big attacks that try to come against you. Like the attacks get bigger the closer you get to where he's taking you. Not to allow those last attacks to make you throw up hands and say, you know what, it's over, I'm done, just, you can have it, I give up. Now, I understand that urge, that is a human urge that, that I feel at times, that I'm sure if you're honest with yourself that you feel at many times. There's sometimes where it's like, I don't care how close I am, I can't take not one more hit. Um, and, and I believe that there's somebody that really feels like you're right there, like, I know I'm close to break through. I know I'm close uh, to arriving at the place that I've always been wanting to arrive, uh, but man, I, have you ever felt like you, your your strength is at such an all-time low that if you just add one more feather on top, you're just going to fall over under the weight of everything that has been coming against you because it's been so persistent, so consistent. I'm here to tell you um, and to pray that you get just a little more strength because that's all you need. All you need is just a little more strength to be able to endure the last little push before you arrive at your promise, before you arrive at breakthrough. Um, and so the confidence um, that I had coming out of these prayers and the reassurance that I felt the Lord giving uh, through me to God's people and now to you, God's people as well, is that while many of us are going through challenging situations where attacks are indeed present, where we are indeed under attack, um, I need you to understand that just as the attacks of the enemy have intensified, uh, 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 at the same time, I'm trying to think of a certain word and it's not it's not directly proportionate. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Directly proportionate to the increase in the level of attacks of the enemy is the increase of the level of protection and covering of the Lord. Because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So the greater the attack, the greater the protection. I hope that's encouraging somebody even right there. Um, so I believe that I am on assignment today to tell some people that while there have been some orchestrated attacks from the enemy, that no one, no thing can out strategize the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God that you serve. And so while the, the orchestration of some attacks has been there, I need you to understand that the orchestration of systems of protection for you, systems of protection that will serve as barriers and blockages to the impact of the attacks of the enemy have already been put in place. And you are covered. You are are covered. I wish you would type it as a declaration of faith, even if you don't feel it. I am covered. I am covered. All right. So, uh, when I say you're covered, that means you're shielded. That means there is a fortress around, like a force field. Like, 
Uh, you can think of a sci-fi movie or an old cartoon, whatever you may need to to get the imagery. There's a force field. Um, it may be an invisible force field, but there is something around you that is guarding you from being um, impacted negatively by the fiery darts that the enemy is sending, by the attacks um, of people, the attacks of um, systems, the, the attacks that are coming against you to try to push you off of your mark. There is a force field that he is strengthening and that he has positioned around you, oh my goodness, so that you can endure what is coming at you. So when, when we use that term hedge of protection, hedge of protection, um, in Bible times, uh, right now when we think of hedges, we think about we got to go outside and we have these bushes in front of our house, that these hedges that we need to shape up uh, and trim as we're beginning to enter into the spring and summer months. Um, but that's really not kind of what was meant by a hedge of protection in Bible days. In the Bible times, hedges were um, of a completely different design than what we have today. They were not those green bushes. Hedges um, were made of these intertwined thorn bushes, uh, these weaved together thorn bushes uh, that would grow around what needed to be protected. I need to be protected. So there would be these hedges, these interweaved, thorny, protective kind of fences, if you will, um, that would surround many times livestock, uh, many times it's what they would put around animals um, to protect the livestock from the wild animals that would come to try, oh my goodness, to destroy the livestock. So these intertwined thorn bushes that would grow around what needed to be protected um, use similar to a fence to keep out wild animals, especially um, for, for livestock in many cases. All right. So the shepherd, oh my goodness, somebody, somebody flow with me in this. The shepherd would elaborately design these interlocked systems of protection, these thorn bushes, these interlocked systems um, of, of fencing and a hedge of protection, uh, the shepherd would elaborately design these systems of protection around their valued possession to ensure safety and preservation of their prized possession. Then on top of the fact that there would be this hedge of protection, this woven physical uh, force field, a thorny thing so that when the enemy would try to come in and grab it, it would the enemy would be hurt, would be cut, uh, and would recognize there is resistance. They would recognize, oh my goodness, the enemy would recognize that there is resistance, a hedge of protection around this valued possession in the same way. Uh, you are protected, you are covered, and you are special and valuable to God. And so he is designed in the spirit realm a hedge of protection around you, a thorny interlocking system of protection to keep the enemy and the adversary from being able to come in and to hurt you. And when the enemy attempts, oh my goodness, to attack you, he runs into the thorn. It cuts his kingdom. All right. And so, y'all with me? And so, uh, not only was there this physical hedge of protection, but the shepherd also would use the watchful vision, the ability that the shepherd had to see, to oversee and to look out for any attacks that would be trying to come in to harm the livestock. And so the shepherd would use their ability to see. The shepherd could see some things that the sheep could not see. And so the shepherd would use the shepherd's ability and vision to see in order to add another layer of protection to keep the valued possession from harm. But not only that, if by chance the shepherd would then see um, the enemy coming in to attempt to attack the valued possession, the shepherd would use that vision and see the attack, but then would use all of the strength 
the weapons and the power at the shepherd's disposal to go fight against the adversary that was trying to attack the valued possession. So there's three layers right there of protection, uh, systemic protection that were in place uh, for the livestock. And in the same way, uh, first natural and spiritual, there are these same kind of elaborate systems in place and more to protect your value, to protect your peace, to protect you as you go about fulfilling the purpose and the plan and the will of God in your life from harm and from the attack. I wish you would type it again. I'm covered. I am covered. I am covered. I'm so glad I'm covered. And so um, very familiar passage of scripture, Psalm, the 23rd number of Psalms, the 23rd number of the book of Psalms. Uh, we, we all know this, right? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, right? Um, we know this. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He has all this. He, he's trying to get me to a place of peace, right? He's taking me by. He, I'm in pastures. I have the provision I need. Uh, I'm by the still waters. I have the sustenance of, uh, of, of water that I need. Uh, I'll be able to remain hydrated. And also, it, it, it's still waters. It's calming. There's the sound of streams flowing. There's a peace that passes all understanding. He's trying to bring me into a place of peace and provision. Oh, my goodness. He's trying to bring you into a place of peace and provision. And then verse 3 goes on. He restores my soul. So anything that I have lost through the battles of life, through dealing with adversities that have come against me, he brings me back down to peace. He restores my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions make up my soul. He, he brings my thoughts into order. He brings my emotions into order. He brings my desire to do in order he restores my soul and then he leads me in the paths of righteousness he takes me on the right paths uh he begins to put me in the right direction for his namesake uh and then you all know the scripture yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death so yeah i'm going through some situations i'm going through some trials i'm going through uh, some situations where there are attacks that are really trying to position themselves to take me out. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It says, but even though I'm doing that, I will fear no evil. I'm not afraid because he has restored my soul. He has calmed my spirit. He has postured me in a position where I have access to provision and peace, where I have what I need, where I feel what I need. Uh, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why won't I fear it? Because he is with me, for you are with me. Because the shepherd is right there with me, seeing what I can't see, protecting me from what I can't overcome, keeping me from what I can't keep myself from. For you are with me. Your rod, your correction, and your staff, your direction. Your correction and your direction prepare, oh my goodness, uh, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your protection and your direction provides me with comfort. When I know that you're going to get me back on course when I go off course. And when I know that you're going to show me what direction I should go so that I can get to where you are, you're calling me to, that provides me with a level of comfort even if it doesn't always feel good to be corrected. Even if it doesn't always feel good when you tell me to go in a direction that's different than how I envisioned it would be, to go in a direction that's different than the direction that I would choose of my own mind of my own understanding you make me do some things that sometimes don't make sense to me yet i feel a level of comfort and i can maintain both my peace and my provision when i'm on the path that you have assigned me to uh you you oh my goodness you're riding your staff they comfort me verse five goes on you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, even when these attacks are coming against me, you keep on providing. You keep on giving me what I need to be able to flourish and survive and thrive. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. You keep on anointing me. You keep on 
giving me the ability to do what I could not do on my own. You keep on allowing me access to your strength when my strength begins to wane and fade away. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. My provision is more than enough. You not only are giving me uh, enough to sustain me, but you're giving me abundance. You are allowing me not only to survive, but also to thrive. My cup runs over and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will keep on being where you tell me to be. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, I need you to understand that 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 passage, and I'll I'll leave it right there. There's more that I'm going to keep on talking about in coming weeks on this subject. But I need you to understand that He is our shepherd, that He is He has prepared systems of protection to counteract the systems of attack and oppression that attempt to come against you, and then He uses His vision. I'm talking about. The, the the omnipotent, omnipresent one's vision, the omniscient one's vision, the one who can see everything, the one who stands at the end and sees the beginning from the end. He's using his vision also to protect you. Oh, my goodness. And then his power, the omnipotent, sovereign God, to fight off the attacks of the enemy that are trying to come against you. It is good news that no matter what you're going through, you, you need to understand that you are covered you're covered we're going to talk more about this in the coming weeks i just want to set the table a little bit today um because i know that some of us are going through some hard stuff whether it's physical in our bodies emotional um uh, financial occupational there are attacks on on multi-tiers on different levels and different systems that keep on trying to come against us and i need you to really grab hold of the fact that he is he is stronger than your attacker, that he has developed more intricate and strategic systems for your protection than the enemy could ever devise and come up with for your attack. <laughs> and so you're covered and you're going to be all right. And greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Go in that your strength. Be encouraged. Take that. Use that. Uh, in, uh, take that in. Um, and let it begin to see the fruit of that in your life. I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray uh, for each and every one under the sound of my voice. Many have been going through many things. Uh, we've been witnessing another wave of, of people dying and separating from this world. We've been witnessing um, more waves of physical attacks on the bodies of people, um, of emotional stress, just stress. Uh, and anxiety. And so um, with all of that, uh, we thank you that you are stronger than anything that we're going through. We thank you uh, that your systems of protection of us are greater and stronger than the enemy systems of attacks that he sends against us. And we thank you that as we go through whatever it is that we're facing, that we are covered, that we have a hedge of protection, that you are our shield and our buckler our strength and our horn, that you are our fence, that you are, uh, you are our, 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 our covering, our covering, that you are our shepherd. And so, God, we thank you uh, that we can be assured of the fact that you are with us, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, no matter how we feel. We thank you that you are with us, and that gives us hope, that gives us strength, Strength to be able to keep on standing a little while longer as we as you push us on the right path to our destination, our destiny, our place of promise, our place of blessings, our place, our land of milk and honey, the place where provision begins to stick to us, our place of calm, our place of still calm waters, our place of green pastures. Oh, my goodness. We thank you that we are covered, we're trusting you through the process, and we are believing you to bring us into everything that you have for us. We thank you for your vision. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your love. And we'll bless you now. We'll praise you forever. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray, and we love you with our whole hearts. Thank God. Amen. You all have a phenomenal week. Love you all.